Welcome to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast, your number one source of all things bodybuilding. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future episodes. Now, here's your host, Leroy Rollins. All right, people, welcome to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast. Me and this guy just got out of bed real early to do this for you guys, so I hope you enjoy it. Yep. I'm here with a uh, fellow competitor, Kellen, and uh, we're going to talk about his season getting cut short and uh, kind of what the plans are moving forward and how he's dealing with everything. So introduce yourself, my man, and we'll uh, we'll just get right off into it. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Kellen. I am known on Instagram as Swellen, but basically uh, this was going to be my first show that I was going to compete in this year. Uh, finally, I decided to start competing. And unfortunately, it was cut short due to the coronavirus, but it's just a little hiccup in the road. Uh, not, it's not stopping anything. Like, still planning on competing eventually, but for now, we're just maintaining. Yeah. So, it's when, good. When is the question, right? <laughs> I know. That's the thing, because like, I wanted to maintain my weakness, but we don't know how long this can go on for. So, yeah, I think at this point, it's better to start build up your strength and energy again. Yeah. And eat a couple more calories, but, and then when we know a show is coming, just start cutting from there. Yeah, yeah. So, to give you guys a little background, he was supposed to do the Coburg show, so for any of you guys that follow me, um, I had competitors in that show that at four weeks out, you guys all found out that it was kiboshed, which I think we knew was coming, it was just a matter of when, um, we were all holding out that little bit of hope that maybe it was going to go, but then at four weeks out. We uh, we got notified. So, what was kind of your immediate reaction mindset? Obviously, first show, so you're pumped, right? Yeah, um, like it was a lot, definitely to get used to like the prep and everything, because that was my first time. Yeah. Um, but I think just because all this show around the Coburg um, competition, we were starting to get canceled. I kind of figured that would get canceled too. Yeah. I'm still like on maintaining my diet and keeping up with like my workouts and everything but sure. uh yeah i still figured it would be canceled eventually and when they did announce it i was kind of relieved to be honest because yeah that was everybody's uh, reaction that i was coaching as well that it was just like yeah. they were just like it was almost like you're holding your breath and then yeah. all of a sudden they just say it and you're like oh, okay now well, I, now i can move on <laughs> i know that they're saying too like they um they could have like 50 people Yep. in the event space or whatever. Yep. But even at that, like, for the pandemic that was going on, like, it's better to be safe than sorry because everyone's going to be in, like, a deficit, depleted, yep. low immune systems. Like, it doesn't make sense to have everybody together. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what, let's let's back up a little bit. How was your first prep? Run me through kind of time frame. I know you were working with Ammer, which was awesome, I'm sure. So give us a little yep. insight into that. Uh, yeah, so I had a couple of friends recommend Aaron to me, so um, we spoke just after Christmas and began prep right away. Yep. Uh, hadn't had an off season with him. It was more just me. I actually went through a cut at that time. Um, so we jumped right into it with Amher, and the prep was good. Like He just kept me on a diet plan that he gave me, and... Um, stuck, stuck with it all the way through with like the workout plan. Yep. Um, there are a couple of hiccups like my job. I had to travel a lot with Canada or throughout Canada, so uh, I couldn't always keep my my diet plan going because yeah. um, I wasn't always around the kitchen. For sure. But along the way, like I figured with my body type. Um, even if I cheated a little here and there, like I could still maintain the leanness yep. pretty well. Yep. And it wasn't until eight weeks out that he started actually putting me in a deficit. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, from there, like we started introducing cardio, um, lower calories, yep. lower fats, and it did get harder for sure. Like I couldn't, I didn't have as much energy as I did before. Yeah. Um, but no, like through the whole thing, I kind of enjoyed it a lot, actually. Nice, good. It was unfortunate that four weeks I get cut short. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, what was uh, like? What got you into bodybuilding? Like, have you always been into it? Did it kind of just spur of the moment? Did it come up the last 
year? Like what, what's your background with bodybuilding? Like I, for me, for example, I was like hooked when I was a teenager. So I knew eventually I was going to do this in some fashion. So what, huh. what's kind of your attraction to the sport? Um, well, okay. So I've always been into fitness Yep. and I wasn't really happy with my body type at the time. Like I was very skinny, very light. I was 145 pounds and when I was 18. Yep. I wanted to change that. That was like my main focus. Um, I wasn't really into bodybuilding at the time. It was sure. just more to like, get my weight back up there. Totally. Um, so yeah, I went on like a six year bulk, added some weight, and I was always interested in like the bodybuilding figures, but never really the sport. Yep. It wasn't until probably last year or a year and a half ago that I actually got interested in it. Okay. Uh, so I figured if I kept bulking for the time, 2020 would be like the year that I could cut down and be happy with like my stage weight sort yeah. of thing. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it was just a progressive interest from that point. Nice. Um, and, but at this point I know I want to keep competing and eventually I'd love to go pro. Yep. Yep. And right stay natural. Nice. Um, so you were going to do classic, correct? So what was your weight change from start of prep to where you were the leanest? Uh, I started at 185, and then I got down to 173. Okay. Before we started. Um, however, though, like three months before that, before we started prep, when I did like my own little cut, from that point I was 205 pounds. So that was like that was a pretty big bulk at yeah. that point, and then. Yeah. You were heavy. <laughs> yeah. Cut down 30 pounds from that point, and then from there, I gained 10 pounds, and then we went back down. Right on. Do you think yeah. uh, you were probably pretty close to stage weight, or was there a little bit left? Uh, definitely a little bit left. I think Amir still probably could lose like two or three pounds yep. of fat or something, but I think for the most part, um, I was pretty close. I mean, like, the last check-in photos I did with Hammer, um, I think that was probably the leanest that I'd ever been, so yep, yep. I'm not sure how much more I could have cut, because um, I know, like, for classic bodybuilding, you're supposed to maintain, like, a fullness. Yeah, right? they don't want you yeah. as shredded as open bodybuilders, for sure. Yeah, so, still, like, a learning curve for me, but um, I'll try one there, too, for sure. That's awesome, man. What uh, what brought you to classic versus bodybuilding? Is it just the look that you're attracted to, or just not the idea of wearing a speedo on stage? Because <laughs> that's a big that's a big hurdle for guys. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I thought I was gonna do men's physique, and Amber was the one who told me to do classic. Okay, okay. So, I uh, just just observing you on Instagram, I, I think that was a smart choice personally. Yeah. Um, you got a good frame for it, which is huge. Like classic is one of those ones where you can build X amount of muscle or you can get X amount of leanness, but your skeleton matters a lot in classic physique. Yeah. Um, like depending on how wide your hips are, how wide your clavicles are, that all matters. So I think just from you and how you're built, like smart choice, I think, because that gives you more room to fill out a little bit, uh -huh. but your bones won't change. You know what I mean? So you can just add a little bit of muscle in certain spots and just accentuate your look. So I was I was excited to see you up there because I had a guy that was doing classic as well and I told him, I was like, if you two are in the same class, I'm going to be so pumped because that's going to be such a good, <laughs> such a good battle. And that's like for me, like I know some people like hate the idea of competing at a competition, uh -huh. but like I love to see that because it's, it's so cool, right? I mean, we all love to see Jay and Ronnie or Arnold and Franco back in the day. Like that was... Yeah. You like to see that stuff, right? So, no, yep. I think that was a smart choice. So, moving forward, is classic where you'll stay? Yeah, definitely. Um, Amber had me more focused uh, on, like, the muscle groups that mattered for classic, which is great. Like, yep. um, cranking back twice a week, legs twice a week sort of thing. And just trying to build up, like, the proportions there. Yep. Um, yeah, it was definitely, like, a bit of a learning curve because I thought um, – my physique was more towards men's physique, but uh, I think classic was where I wanted to eventually get up to. So yeah. if I can start now, perfect. Perfect. 
Um, how do you handle the posing? Because obviously in classic posing is, you know, arguably as important in classic as your physique. Whereas in yeah. like bodybuilding, guys can get away with just being kind of shitty posers, which is very annoying. <laughs> so how did you did you pick it up pretty good? Like there's a flow to it, right? How did you handle? Yeah, that? there is a flow. Um, <laughs> it was definitely a curveball for me because. Me thinking going in that I would do my physique, I was like, okay, I don't have to do any posing. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, but Amory was a great coach for awesome. like posing practice. Yeah, uh, that was a huge help because we went through countless poses, <laughs> just trying to see like what looked good on my body. For sure. Um, and yeah, like the flow was a bit hard for me at the beginning because I just couldn't figure out like a way to shift the weight and make yeah. it like. Seamless. Yeah. So it was a lot of practice, a lot of hours um, in the mirror trying to get it down. <laughs> but uh, I think like six weeks out was where I found like the poses that worked for me really well. Nice. And I just kept practicing. I was getting better every day. So yeah. Um, right now I'm happy with the way the poses I have. And like even for the, what is it, the um, favorite classic pose? Yep. I went through like 20 different poses for that one. <laughs> what'd you, what'd you settle um, on? Um, it's, it's sort of like the um, ab and thigh, but uh, just like with the arm out. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, so with prep, any any hurdles you had? Obviously, you said that uh, when you were traveling for work and stuff, it could have been tricky. But were there any other times where you're like, man, this is hard? Yeah, um, there's a lot of times I would be overly tired or I couldn't finish a workout just from like lack of energy, and I would throw in like a couple of cheats here and there, not like full cheat meals, just like something to give me energy. Sure. Um, did you get did you get like backhanded about that stuff from from the coach? Like, did he give you shit? No, he was actually pretty good about it, and he did give me. Quite a few cheat meals, like when he said, like depleted and everything. So, because yep. I have a really fast metabolism too, um, my body, I don't know, it just loves to lose weight. <laughs> Which in prep is never a bad thing. No, it's good. Uh, yeah, so I had a couple of refeeds and uh, just kind of get my, like, maintain the fullness. Yep. Good, good. What was, yeah. like, a typical cheat meal? Like, was it programmed or what? Did you have a little free reign with that? Uh, no, it's usually just burger and fries. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of the staple, eh? And, and if you do that, I mean, that's my go-to as well, like five guys or something. And if mm -hmm. you always have that, then you can always predict the outcome. You know what yeah. I mean? So if guys have like, you know, a burger and fries and then they go for sushi and then they go for whatever, it's hard to it's hard to map what works, <laughs> right? <'Cause laughs> obviously, you know, but cheat meal. Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, no, like, the burger and fries is great, because, like, the next day I'd wake up, um, and be full again, yeah, but exactly. I'd still, like, be perfectly lean. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, and that's, like, data you want for the show, right? Because if you're going to compete on the Saturday morning, you want to know what you're going to eat Friday night is going to get you the desired result Saturday morning, because if you go and have A, B, and C, and you've never had it before, then you wake up bloated, well, you might have just completely shot your show, right? So... Yeah. No, that's, that's good. Um, so, okay, how old are you? 25. 25, okay. So, 25, when do you turn 26? Uh, November. November. So, there's a chance you hit the stage before that. Is that, like, kind of your hopes is just if something comes up in the late summer, fall, you'll jump into it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I do want to compete this year, uh, no matter what. Somehow. What it is. <laughs> yeah. I want to get some shows in because I do want to go pro eventually and then no, I had to get some shows under my belt first, but yeah. I don't know. I think even if it's later on, as long as I'm maintaining um, from this point through the summer, I can cut easily like in a month or two. Yeah, it's kind of a similar boat that like I have now gotten into myself. Like I, I had shows planned for the year, but it wasn't looking good, so... I started prep at 192, got down to 164, 165, so just about 30 pounds, probably another wow. 10 or 15 left. Yeah, it was going to be a 40-pound cut. 
Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I compete at like one, 150, 151 is like a typical stage weight, but that's like peeled. Um, so now the goal is to just probably maintain like 165 to 175 all okay. year. All year. Um, obviously, like without enough gym equipment and that kind of stuff. Like I don't think me trying to bulk and build muscle this year, I don't think it's going to really get me anything just fatter and have to lose it all again. So I'll probably kind of maintain this for the year. If nationals in July goes, I'll probably, like if I know eight weeks out it's still running, I'll probably try to jump into it. If yeah. not, I'm just going to assume diet, like just maintain this year and then start prep next year just because I there's no shows in the fall that I want to do and I'd rather coach people and put all my effort into that this year. Um, from my understanding, I know, so Ottawa just rescheduled to September. So okay. I think there, I think from my understanding, most promoters are hopeful that August, September, October is when things start running. I know I had Amber on the podcast yesterday and he said he assumes nothing until July. Um, so, you know, there's hope for all you guys that Coburg gets rescheduled to like September, maybe October, that would give you, you know, July, August, like if you needed another eight weeks to clean up, like you'd be plenty of time to do that. So I'm, I'm very hopeful for you guys because yeah. obviously you being a first time competitor, you, you want to get up there, right? You want to showcase yep. what you fucking work so hard on, right? I know. I know. I thought, uh, I thought you were going to be in the Cobra Naturals again because I know you were the winner last year for the classic, but I was like, shit, I'm going up against this guy. No, I uh, I had so many people. So, like, I'm really tight with John, who, like, runs uh -huh. the show. Um, so I told him, I was like, anything you want me to do to help promote it? Because I actually, like, when I first got into competing, I did two little shows in 2015 at the end of 2015. But I would say Coburg in 2016 was, like, my first real, like, crack at it, right? Yep. I put a lot of effort into it. I had a coach for it, and, like, we we did the thing. Um, so, Coburg's got a special place in my heart because that was, that was my first real thing. So, in 2015, I did the class, did men's physique, did bodybuilding, and, and did good. And then all these years later, 2019 rolled around, and I went back, and I was like, I want to win the overall. That's all I want. So, we busted our asses, so we did that, and then that was the first show that I coached people in, too was 2019 so then it had an even, okay. more, it had an even better place in my heart because I had actually coached people for that stage and, and all that kind of stuff so now 2020 came along and I told him I was like anything you want me to do to promote it and all this stuff and so I just tagged him in all my photos to try to bring some publicity well then it felt like weekly I was getting messages are you competing are you competing are you competing I'm like yeah. no no I'm not <laughs> <laughs> but no like, so you were going for your pro card though, right? Like the WNBF one? Yeah, that was my that was my goal this year. Um, that was all I wanted. So the the thing with that is in Canada, all the WNBF shows are in BC. Oh. So it's easier for me to drive down to upstate New York, the three hours across the border, because I'm in Kingston. So it takes like two seconds to drive across. And then, then fly all the way to BC, right? Because it's an eight hour, yep. eight or whatever it is, flight and seven hundred dollars plane ticket. So yeah. I went down there after Coburg last year and competed, and it was, it was very well run, which I liked. It was fully drug tested, which I liked. So every athlete had to do a polygraph, a lie detector test, and then winners are immediately followed into the washroom after they get off stage and urine tested. Which, oh, which for me is super, I want to see that, right? Yeah. Um, so my goal this year was to go back down and try to do that. But obviously, New York's a shit show right now. And yep. I can't get across the border. So once that dream faded, I kind of was like, well, there's really not much point in me stepping on stage at all this year. Because whether I do a show up here, down there, whatever, my chances of getting a pro card aren't, aren't there. So, and I don't want to compete just for the sake of like stepping on stage. Like I'm, I'm past that now. I want to compete to like further my career. Right. Right. Just like for yourself, you'll get some stage experience and then, then every show is like, I want to turn pro. I want to turn pro. I want to, you want to get to that next step. Uh -huh. So 
I'll go to nationals with the chance of getting an IFBB pro card naturally, but me being a small bodybuilder, it's hit and miss, right? It depends on who shows up. Classic is different, I find. Like, you, you might be able to skirt it, but, like, for me, I don't know. I mean, I won the overall at Coburg, right? So I can beat bigger guys. It just it totally oh. depends on what they look like, right? And that's with everything. You never know. Yeah. Someone and being natural, that's the hardest thing because, like, you're chasing the same thing that all these athletes are on gear are doing too, but uh, trying to maintain, like, your natural state and – yeah. Yeah. Also them. And that's the other side of it, right? So for for me, you know, I would be very, very disappointed if someone went to like the nationals you and I would do naturally, if someone went there enhanced and, and took that away because bodybuilding's the only sport that has two different lanes. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like in football, there could be guys that take stuff, guys that don't, and they intermingle on the field and is what it is. Whereas in bodybuilding you know, if me and you are natural, we're going to do these shows. We're going to do this nationals. We're going to try to get this pro card. If these guys are enhanced, they're going to do these shows, do this nationals, try to get that pro card. Yes, yeah. the end result is the same, but how you get there is different. My issue is when guys try to sneak over to yeah. the other side of the tracks and compete with the natural guys and, and try to skirt the system. Uh-huh. and take that opportunity away, right? Like a natural guy who's big is like a buck 80, right? Like if you're yeah. 180 pounds and shredded as a bodybuilder, like you're huge, right? Yeah. But if you're shredded in 220 and you're enhanced, like that's a, it's a totally different thing, you know what I mean? So that's part of the reason why I go down to the WMBF in all honesty is because I know at least everybody's going to be lie detector tested and the winners are for sure going to be urine tested. Whereas up here, there's no lie detector tests. Um, I know, like, I've never been tested in five years of competing. No? Never tested, right? Even, and I, even as the winner from last year? I thought it was, like, top three that they test. Oh, wow. Well. And that's my problem, right? I love the CPA. Don't get me wrong. They've, I love the people that run it and the way they promote everything, the shows they run, it's awesome. I have nothing bad to say about the CPA. My only gripe is the drug testing. I want them to put more effort into that because for someone like me who takes it very seriously and I'm very passionate about natural bodybuilding, I want to make sure it's an even playing field, right? Because I know, I know for a fact at Coburg, there was guys that were trying to get in there, not natural. Yeah, and, and my, you're paying. You're paying for the drug test too, right? Like every time that you compete. Yep, hundred percent. Right. So my issue is, there's. I mean, there there was a very good chance you would have been up there, my friend, with someone who took stuff, and whether he beats you or not, could very well like you could very well beat him, right? Because that's not like drugs don't just make you a winner. Simple as yeah. that. But yeah. there's a chance yeah. that he took that placing from other people. Right, and he can go home with his first, second, third overall, whatever it is, trophy. And you know, if you can put your head on your pillow at night, I think you're you're an asshole if you're doing that. <laughs> but like, no one's the wiser, right? Like he yeah. knows. Maybe his close friends know, and it's a little bit of a joke. But like um, for for you, for me, that's busted our asses naturally to get to that stage. Yep. Yeah. And hoping that the honor system that everybody else is natural, you know what I mean? Like I, I know it, I know it happens and that's the issue, right? If I didn't know any better, then it wouldn't bother me. Right. Uh-huh. Is what it is. Right. If, if, if I didn't know that there was people that actually did that, then it wouldn't be a problem. But I, I, I know most shows there's people that try to get through it. Right. I think someone at nationals last year, a girl got her pro card um, redacted from her because she got because at nationals they did test, and she got oh. she. I think it was either a bikini or a figure girl. She got her pro card taken away. Wow. Yeah. So at that level, it seems to be, and that's why I was gonna do nationals because at that level, it seems to be they will test, right? Uh-huh. But at like like I said, I've like I mean I did nationals twenty seventeen as well, and I won the lightweight class. Never tested. Um, I know the overall winner was tested, and he kept his 
like he tested clean, so that's good. But like I want to see, especially for us paying the fee, I want to yeah. see something. And even if it is just the lie detector test, like when I go to the when I go to the states, and like if you like look it up on YouTube, you can find there's a clip from the video um, that I went into a room with the dude, and he strapped me all up, and it was like ten minutes. He asked me a bunch of questions, and so what they do is they ask you like three or four questions, but like multiple times to see if there's any like discrepancies in like your heart rate when you answer. Yeah. Cause like you can, you can like, you can pass a lie detector test. Like you can do it if you're a good liar, I guess. Like, I don't know how they do it. But uh -huh. so he asked like, um, are you from Canada? So the answers are always just yes or no. Right. So for example, he's like, are you from Canada? And I'd be like, yes. And then he's like, are you here to compete in a bodybuilding show? Yes. And he goes, have you taken any banned substances in the last seven years? Because that's the limit. Actually, this past year, I think they bumped it to 10, right? Oh, really? Yeah. So seven years, and I say no. I haven't taken anything. Then he goes back. Are you from Canada? Um, are you here to compete? Have you taken any substance? And then you start thinking. You're like, wait, is he on to something? Like, did I do something? <laughs> you start to, you start to second, up in the end. Yeah, you start to second guess yourself. So – you know, that's why I like that they do that because at least you know. So if someone's taking something and they know there's a chance they're not going to get tested, it's more likely they'll continue on and try to get into the show. Whereas yeah. if you go to the show and you're taking stuff and you know you're at least going to be lie detector tested. And then if you win, you're going to be urine tested. So you're always going to be tested once. And then if you win, you're going to be tested twice. That's a big discouragement. It's a so, big risk too. Like, 100%. it doesn't seem like there's a point to it. And that's that's exactly it, right? Like, if you're enhanced and you're gonna do a show that you're gonna be tested in, you're probably not gonna do that show. Yep. Right. You're yeah, either not gonna get your money back either. Like, if you do get tested, yeah, and you come back negative, it's like, well, you're disqualified. <laughs> yeah, and now and now and people know, right? Now you look like a an asshole. <laughs> so yep. yeah, that's my. Uh, that's my rant about that, but that's just as as someone who who enjoys natural bodybuilding, I would love to see them put more effort into it um, to make sure it is natural, right? Because I know so many people who work hard, you know, doing everything they can naturally, and to have that potentially taken away from someone who's just not not nice, <laughs> simply yeah. put, it, it's just not cool. Yeah. Well, even like for bodybuilding, uh, there's so much I had to teach myself about it and learn this year because I had no idea. Um, I thought so many, I was so naive, like so many athletes out there I thought were natural, like even yeah. Regan Grimes, I thought he was natural, <laughs> like for the longest time too. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things that I had to like learn that uh, like was capable of being natural and yeah. I thought like, it was achievable but realistically it's not and the way that I was at was kind of at my plateau um, like for bulking yeah. and putting on muscle size but I think uh, with the like the with what Amber had me on um, in terms of like diet plan and training uh, I did notice like a difference in growth mm -hmm. a difference in growth story yes so I think if I keep going with that, I will have a sort of similar physique, but to like an open classic, but obviously Downside. within the parameters of being natural. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's crazy. Like when you, when you see top level natural athletes, for example, compared to top level open naturally, it's like I said, like a big guy on stage naturally is like 180 and he's shredded, yep. then he's big. Whereas mm -hmm. a big guy enhanced, I mean, you look at Regan, who's 260. Yeah. And he's like, and he's our age. Like, he's got 100 pounds on me, basically, of stage weight. Oh. Uh, he's a little bit taller. He's a little bit taller yeah. than me, so so we'll give him that. Say it's only 80 pounds, but still, like, 80 yeah. pounds of, of more than likely muscle weight, like, that is insane. Monster. Yeah. I mean, people see my photos, and then they see me in person, they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, you're you're not very big. I'm like, thanks, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> What's your height? Uh, like five seven on a good day. Yeah. And then, <laughs> like, like right now, I'm like a comfortable, decently lean, 
not shredded. So uh-huh. I don't look too small, but when I get like, man, when I get down to 150, like medium shirts are like big on me. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and like when I walk around, like, you know, backstage because it's freezing cold, usually you're in like pajama pants and a hoodie, like a baggy stuff. Right. And also, so it doesn't wreck your tan. And yeah. like, I look small. Right. But then when I get on stage, you get pumped up, you get the lighting. And uh-huh. like, I mean, even some of those photos I posted yesterday, like I look <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, then, and, then, and then and then people yeah. see me and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm like the way the great proportions like your your quads are huge, your back muscles are huge, like and that's I bodybuilding. Person, but and that's what I that's I think that's what I like about bodybuilding, right? It's it's an illusion, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's that's for classic, it's huge, right? Like if you have a really small waist and then you just got these ridiculous lats. Like, uh-huh. you can look, like, you hit, like, a back double or, like, even, like, a lat spread, like, you'll look 200 pounds, right? And I think that's what, same with me, like, I'm very, very small jointed, so, uh-huh. like, you would mentioned my quads, like, my ankles and my knees are small, so then my quad, my quads just look like they're like that, <laughs> right? So, it's just, and that's, I think that's why I like bodybuilding is because you can, you can play with all those other variables and kind of create this sculpture, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So moving forward, we are now, what is it, April the 6th. Say shows go in September. What do you do from now to then? Um, well, since it's been checked, I've been doing a bit of reverse dieting. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't, like I was speaking with Amber, he's still going to be my coach, but right now we're just sort of hitting pause. Uh, keeping up with the weight training, but sort of doing my own diet. Yep. Um, like reverse dieting. So I'm just trying to build up the strength and energy again. Uh, and if it continues in September, then I'll probably start cutting again in like July. Yep. Or, yeah, uh, give, give yourself another 8 to 12 weeks kind of deal. Yeah, because my strength has gotten up there again, and I think I was where I was at, um, at the end of my bulk right now. Nice. Which is great because I feel like 25, 30 pounds less than I was at my bulk weight. Um, so I'm going to maintain the strength there, see if I can get like a little bit more muscle possibly, uh, and then cut down again. Nice. What's your gym situation like? Is that like at your home? You got a decent setup? Yeah, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to have a good home gym. I never used it. Like I always preferred going to the gym, but yeah. uh, for this, it's coming in clutch for nice. sure. I'm going to build a squat rack today. <laughs> That's my project. Yeah, one of my so I saw this post. This guy like built a squat rack, like built it out of wood, and it was like super sturdy, looked good. But he used uh like cement stones and drilled oh. a hole in them for like your weights. Oh. So like a, oh. a square like patio stone is fifty pounds. So by the time yeah. you by the time you drill the hole through it, it's probably close to forty five. And a friend of mine owns a landscaping company, so he's got a shit ton of those stones. At his, oh. at his warehouse, so I was like, can I, like, take some or buy some? Off you? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man. It's going to be cheaper than getting plates. Legit, and it, like, it's going to work just as well, so I'm just going to go build a squat rack today. I'm going to hopefully be able to get a pulley so you can do, like, pull-downs with, yeah. and then we're just going to dr- oh. we're just gonna drill a bunch of plates out of cement. That's, awesome. That's so smart. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like, people have to get creative for this because there's so many things around your house that you can use for weight. Like, I know Amber and I were shooting some, like, home workout videos. Yeah, with paint but cans. Like, yeah, <laughs> paint cans, like, fill your backpack with some books or canned yeah. goods. Like, it's so easy. And, like, what you're saying with the stones, like, I didn't even think of that, but that's perfect. Well, on yesterday, so on Sundays, yeah, what day is it? Yeah, today's Monday. So, Sundays, I do back and biceps. And uh, I've been just, I haven't been able to do pull-ups. So I'm like, man, I need to go do pull-ups somewhere. And like where I live right now, there's nothing. And like, I wouldn't trust the doors at all here. So, but out back, there's a tree and it's got a branch that was about the right height. So at the beginning of yesterday's workout, I ran outside, a couple sets of pull-ups, came back in, continued the workout and <laughs> lats are a little sore today. So I'll take that. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, man. Uh, final kind of like speed round of questions and then we'll, then we'll close it up. Um, sure. what do you do for work? 
Um, in experiential marketing. So uh, we work with big brand companies um, like Labatt, Coca-Cola, just stuff like that. And we do consumer sampling programs. Um, so they come to us like with an idea of like a product that they want to sample. And then we execute it um, into like a booth sort of thing or a pop-up shop. Yep. And have like a just consumer sampling. Uh, favorite muscle group to train? Ooh, uh, chest, for sure. Top three exercises for chest? Um, incline, bench, uh, pec rec flies, and cable flies. Nice, nice. Uh, go to cheat meal? Burger and fries. <laughs> burger and fries. Where, where do you go? For burger and fries? Yeah. Uh, either five guys or, um, Oh, what's that place? Oh, you can't think of the... <laughs> the works? Not the works. Oh, uh, Hero. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Um, like, uh, looking at your physique, where where do you see the biggest weaknesses that you want to work on? Uh, after, think, after you compete, what's kind of getting attention? My legs. Yeah. Quads and hands. I don't have... My hands are too big, but... Uh, I know some growth, like with the program that Amber has me on. So I think if I just keep continuing, I'll get bigger legs that way. Nice. Um, what's your PRs? Bench, squat, deadlift. Um, bench is three fifteen. I haven't gone past that. Deadlift um, five five twenty five. Nice. Um, and squat. Squad 475. Solid, solid. Were those at your heavy body weight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. I tried, after my cut, I tried doing um, bench again for three plates, and no, it wasn't happening. <laughs> I'd love to like, do it again, but I haven't done, like, I don't do squats right now or deadlifts. I do Romanian deadlifts and Bulgarian split squats. Yeah. But no bench either. So I think actually if, Right now is my off season, kind of, or maintaining. Um, maybe I'll do incorporate those stuff again and try to see where I'm at. Yep, play around again. Uh -huh. um, favorite classic pose? Uh, well, I mean, I'm doing that ab and thigh one right now. Yep. But yeah, I think that one. I That's the go to. That's the go to. What was your yep. posing music? Do you have that picked out? Yeah, actually, um, I was still deciding on the song, but you know Chris Bumstead's um, performance last year with that crazy song? Yep. Um, crazy by Two Way? Yep. I was looking at Two Way's other songs, and they have a lot of really good stuff, so I was picking between like Smoke on the Water um, or Gangsta's Paradise. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Those are my two. <laughs> right on, man. All right, dude. Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and uh, taking time out of your day. So are you still working now then? Uh, yeah, sort of. Like, just working from home. Yeah, yeah. So you got all yeah. the time in the world then. Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me on here. That was no, no, I'm glad. My, my goal this week was to do a podcast every day because I just got told last week that we're, we're closed down for a little bit. So I was like, oh, well, if I can get a podcast every day, that'd be sweet. So... Yeah. Um, I had one go up yesterday, Amber's going today, you'll go up tomorrow, and then I had the rest planned for the week. So it was literally just, I needed, I needed an episode for tomorrow that I need to film today. And I'm like, yeah. who can I interview? Who can I interview? So I sent out like four messages. You were the first one that got back. I was like, boom, perfect. Nice. Yeah, yeah well, I'm glad I could be on here. That's awesome. Plug the Instagram. Where can people find you? Uh, Swellin with an underscore. Sweet. That's my it, name. It'll be linked down below. Uh, you guys can give him a follow and show him some support. And uh, what's this about TikTok? You're uh, you're famous on TikTok or what? <laughs> no, I'm not famous yet. I just started one as a joke. Honestly, I'm kind of mad at myself that I got it. <laughs> but I've been bored. Um, so yeah, if you want to follow me on there too. <laughs> there you go. You're going to see him, things you're gonna see him shop pre-workout and uh, all that fun stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just trying to keep it funny. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, man. Well, you have a great day, and uh, thanks for coming on again. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Have a good day, too. Hope everybody enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you guys in the next one.